Hello, I'm Bill Harris, and this is Life Questions. Thank you for joining us today as we search God's words, word for biblical answers to questions that you, our viewers, have sent us. We're grateful to have you send us those questions, and we have assigned a group of local ministers to research your questions for biblical perspectives and to discuss them on this program. And today they are here armed with some insightful answers, and I'd like for you to meet them right now. First off, we have Pastor Greg Fox of New Hope United Methodist Church in Rawson, Ohio, and also the Bluffton Trinity United Methodist Church, followed by Pastor Darwin Dunton of Mount Tabor Church of God in Salina. Then we have Pastor Dave Burkhardt of Westminster United Methodist Church, and rounding up our panel is Pastor Scott Steed of the Christian Cross Church in Elida. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you all with us, and I should say to have you back with us today. Did a fine job last week, and we're looking forward to your answers this week. Let's start with this question here from uh, one of our viewers. This person says that a strange man came into our church, a very small church, started quoting scriptures, and then asked people to pray for him. He stayed for the entire service, but he was very fidgety. The entire situation was very strange. We prayed for him and one of our men took him to the city mission. Later, we learned that he had just, that he had just been released from prison a few days earlier. And in fact, that very night he was arrested for breaking and entering. Now, several of the women didn't feel comfortable throughout that service. And I, the, the, the viewer is wondering, were we right, she says, to allow him to stay in the church. It turns out that he was a dangerous man. Uh, should we have asked him to leave? And the bottom line question here is, what's the difference between welcoming somebody into our church versus having all these safety precautions? What do you think? Well, Go ahead, you Pastor. Know, we're living in a time now where um, where we have to be prepared for anything. And I believe that as, as shepherds of our flock, um, the scriptures are clear that we are called to to care for the sheep and so so it's very unfortunate but I, I believe that every church now needs to have a security team uh, no matter how big or small your church is mm -hmm. uh, a security team that can take care of situations that may arise and we don't know what's going to happen in our churches um, we know that there's a lot of people that are are hostile towards Christianity today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've seen shootings already mm -hmm. and, and people disrupting church. Uh, the question she asked was, or they asked, man or woman, um, should were we right to let them stay? Absolutely. Everybody's welcome in our churches. Jesus didn't cast anybody out because of something they did. And so, so we need to welcome them, but we also need to be prepared. Uh, if something goes awry in our church. Mm -hmm. And we're very fortunate at Westminster that we have uh, some police officers actually that attend there. And so, so we do have a security detail that's ready to handle situations yeah. if, if need be. Very convenient. Uh, but, but, you know, this guy, you know, who knows? God could have changed his heart by the message that was delivered that day. And so we have to be welcoming, mm -hmm. but we have to be cautious as well. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. I totally agree with, with Dave here, and, and he's exactly right. We do need to be cautious. We do need to protect our flock. But on the same token, you know, as the one new Christian song says, our churches are to be more like a hospital. And we are to have those that are in, in need or in stress or those that have troubles. And by the way the person depicted it here, you know, he quoted scriptures and asked for prayer. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you know, people were uncomfortable. Probably, you know, it could be by his appearance, by the, his fidgeting, his nervousness, which... You know, if, if you were tr struggling with what he was struggling with, you would be fidgety. Um, I think it's great that they allowed him to stay. Um, I think it's great that it was aware. And, and as, as my brother said, you need to be aware of your situation, your surroundings, not just in church, but all of life. So basically the same thing holds true if you're in the, the parking lot of Walmart as you are in your sanctuary. Be aware of your surroundings, be aware of the situation. But of, of all places in our, in, our, in our small little churches, we need to remember that, you know, Christ wants our doors open. Yeah. to allow those that are struggling. Yeah. It, 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 I, you're in a quandary, aren't you, as pastors? Because keep in mind, this man here was later arrested for breaking and entering. I mean, this is the day and time we're living in. Mm -hmm. And how on earth do we make that decision 
to let people in at will and not knowing what they're like, but at the same time, you, an excellent point you're making yeah. about th th that person could have gotten saved by the word of God. We just don't know. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, but so many times when people get out of prison, they just don't know where else to turn. And, and I think that, that we as the church, we need to be that place where they can turn to. Uh, the unfortunate part of that is we don't seem to do enough prison ministry, which we're yeah, actually yeah. called to. Mm -hmm. You know, we're to take care of the widows, the orphans, the prisoners, the, those who are sick. And, and, and we as the church have sort of failed there. Um, we, we used to do a ministry with um, the Worst Center, which is actually an addiction-based um, prison or detention center um, here in Lima. And uh, we've had several girls that would get out of there because we did our Bible study on the, on the lady side and, mm -hmm. and they need help when they get out. Um, we've been able to walk with some of them and be able to you know, help them stay clean yeah. and sober and, yeah. and progress in society. If we, if we don't work with people like that, they have a tough time. Yeah. It is bad to try and recover. Pastor Steve, you, you want to add to that? Well, Jesus made it very clear in Matthew 25, 31 through 46, when he talked about feeding the hungry and giving drink to the thirsty and taking in the stranger and clothing the naked and visiting the sick. How, and they said, Lord, when did we, you know, do that for you? And he said, when you've done that for the least of these, you've done that for me. So the brother's right. The brothers are right. The church has to lead in that. And the church, I do believe, has failed in that. We have to be more proactive and more uh, receptive to those who society has thrown away. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times, you know, they've brought it on themselves. But where would I be without the grace and mercy of the mm -hmm. Lord? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to be flat honest with you. I was hooked on drugs. And, but I'm telling you something. Uh, he had mercy on me. I should be dead in hell today but he had mercy on me. And God's grace and mercy is sufficient yeah. for everyone. I hope you get to tell that everywhere you go. You know, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm telling you something, uh, w without his mercy, where would I be? So I have to be that light. I have to show that love of God. Uh, and like, we have to be careful. We're living in the day and the age where we have to be careful, yeah. but still we have a responsibility to this gospel. Mm -hmm. Pastor Denton, you, you you want to uh, there's a couple of statements here that I don't want to say bothered me, but came out. And one is uh, um, he was a dangerous man. Was he really? He just, he broke into something. Does that mean he's dangerous? I mean, I had a guy that uh, I told you, I had a guy that broke into my church when I was in Finley three times in four days and stole the TVs just so he'd get his uh, oxycodone or oxycotton. And yet he wasn't dangerous. And so that, that's something that comes out. We, we get that perception. Oh, they, they were criminal, therefore they're dangerous. Um, what I would have done, and I have done this, um, my church in Finley would have been considered to be an inner city church. We had a, we had a jail ministry, so we had a lot of in, individuals that came from the Hancock County Jail that would come to us and everything else. So sometimes you just didn't know what you were gonna get. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I would have times when something would be happening, and as a pastor, I would look at one of my elders and I go, and they knew exactly what I meant. And they would go, uh, one time they, they took somebody aside and they talked to the person to find out what that person wanted to do because they wanted to say something in the middle of worship service. Uh -huh. Well, I'm not going to give the pulpit just to anybody. Mm -hmm. And so the elder came back and said, it's okay, it's okay. So they were, the other one would be, uh, have, have an elder security team sit next to him. Just sit next to him. Uh -huh. I mean, don't, don't, just, don't just stare at him. I've been at churches where, you know, all these little old ladies are going like this. Staring at people, you know how that feels. Yeah, and to have an elder sit with them is you're a, you're accomplishing two different things. Uh, not only are you making the the older people, maybe that lady that's a little uncomfortable, feel better because she knows that someone's right there beside right. them. But you can also make them feel comfortable mm -hmm. because somebody actually came and sat with me. They're going to tell me when we need to stand, when we need to right. sit down. You know. Do we raise our hands? Do we, you know, stand there all stoic? Can I ask a question though of this? So the person uh, bro uh, broke an entry and uh, got arrested again. Did your church do anything for him then? When you found out that he was in jail, did you go? Did you? Did you? Did the pastor go visit him? Hey, I understand this. Mm -hmm. 
was that a next step that happened or was it like, point. boy, am point. I glad I moved my purse over here? Uh, so uh, <laughs> I, was, I shared a little story uh, before we got to this. Uh, my wife and I were in Oregon one time and we went, went one of those logging roads mm -hmm. and we came up upon a church and it had a big sign. What a welcoming sign it was. It says, we love our children. Somebody in the church is packing at all times. Boy, is that really, uh, welcome to our church. <laughs> it's like, okay. I, I wish to this day I would have taken a picture of it. My yeah. wife even went, what? So, yeah, unfortunately our churches are really vulnerable in that we're supposed to be a gun-free zone and what have you. And, and someone who, who wants to do evil knows that and they're, thinking maybe easy picking. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think a security team's a good thing, uh, but but uh -oh. just in the case of an extreme mer emergency, I mean, we need to be so welcoming mm -hmm. and so loving and kind, and and yet, on the other hand, we need to be so careful anymore. But notice what Jesus did. He went among them. Mm -hmm. he, he went amongst them, mm -hmm. he ate with them, he talked to them, and we're to follow the example of Christ, and he was even put on the cross by them. Right. Well, they even yeah. told them in Luke 14 and 23 that they needed to go to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come. You know, so we need, we're, it's our responsibility. Uh, the gospel makes that very clear. Jesus made it very clear. It's our responsibility. Okay. Well, listen, let's, let's pause on that note and take a break. When we come back, I'd like to pick up another viewer question that asked, is the Old Testament still relevant to us in this New Testament era today? We'll deal with that and more when we come back right after this. Don't go away. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. Well, thank you for hanging in with us. And our panel is here for our, another round of your questions. And uh, let's go to this question I think is very interesting here. Um, it says, I would like to hear a discussion about the relevance of the Old Testament for modern day. Uh, is it relevant? Why do we only uh, follow certain standards and guidelines presented and not others? Who determined what we still do and don't do? Pretty good question there. Who wants to tackle that first? The nice thing about it is everything in the Old Testament prophesizes what's going to happen in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And when you actually read them both and you can correlate between the two, um, it shows relevance from back to forth. So the nice thing is they warn you ahead of time what's going to happen, what's the result of what you're doing. And, and if you don't follow through with it, in the, in the New Testament, it tells you what, what the results are and what happened because you did it. Yeah. And it's yeah. the same thing in our life today, just like you know, in, in today's society. There are people that tell you what's going to happen if you do things the wrong way. And if you don't follow the guidelines, the result is there. And there's so many things in our life today we take for granted as... A known, a, a known issue or known thing to happen, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we just play it to our own, our own liking, and not what God is telling us. God lays the book down; He's got all the answers, right here in this 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 map of our life. We need to follow it. And I've heard some Christians say that they just follow the New Testament because <coughs> they think that everything in the Old Testament has been done away with. I've heard some Christians say that. First of all, the entirety of the Word of God from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 is relevant and valid for our lives, you know. But like the brother said, the Old Testament points to the New Testament. Everything in the Old Testament is a shadow and a type yeah. of what Christ did for us at the cross. And one you know? case, I think it said that it's the, it's the schoolmaster for yeah. the New Testament. Well, Hebrews, if you read Hebrews chapter 10, 1 through 18, uh, Paul outlines that how the Old Testament is a shadow of what uh, you know Christ did for us, mm -hmm. and and you, I truly believe to understand the New Testament, you have to have an understanding of the Old Testament. What are some of the nuggets of the Old Testament that we should focus more on in this New Testament era that we're living in? What are some of the old nuggets of the, the teaching 
in, in the ways of the old. The, the, the problem is the Old Testament is so big. There's so many different issues there. Are you talking about the history behind it? Are it you talking about, history, God, are you talking about Genesis where God stuff? created? Are you talking about the Old Testament law? Because the Old Testament law is something totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, because Jesus comes out, uh, Romans 10, 4, Jesus is the end of the law. We are not under the Old Testament law. Right. That's why we can eat bacon. And I'm thankful. I was a pig farmer. I'm thankful. <laughs> However, and this, this is a big one, and, and I tell this to the ch my church all the time. We as a church like to take the nuggets of the Old Testament law, and we like to use that as a battering ram against other people. And then we don't have the answer. When we'll, we'll, we'll just use homosexuality as an example. The Old Testament law, the Old Testament says that a man is not to lay with another man. Well, then the homosexual agenda comes out and says, and you're not to eat shellfish either, and you're doing that. And I, so I tell my church, I said, if you're going to go into a, I don't even like to use the word debate, use the New Testament. Use the New Testament, because we're not under the Old Testament law anymore. Does it mean we don't study it? Yeah, we study it, because it points to Jesus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But let's just talk homosexuality. It's condemned in the Old Testament. It's condemned in the New Testament. There's nowhere in scriptures where it's looked upon um, uh, in a favorable light. However, if you go to Deuteronomy or Leviticus and say, this is what it says, then they have every right to come at you and say, do you go to Red Lobster? If so, you're sinning. So, um, so we're not under the Old Testament law. At the same time, I think we need to learn about how God dealt with the Israelites. Sure. And, and some of those principles even come to us today. David went after Goliath. All right? Why did David go after Goliath? Because he trusted that God is more powerful than Goliath. Hmm. Let's go to the book of Judges. Or let's go to uh, um, where Joseph says, well, you meant for evil, God meant for good. Hmm. Huge lessons yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. You know, I, I, going back on David, I, I think often how the, the children of Israel, or the, I should say the army of Israel, felt that Goliath was too big to fight. Right. Whereas David, armed with a slingshot and a stone, felt that Goliath was too big to miss. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a mindset. Right. And, and, yeah. and that's what it teaches me, is, is the proper mindset that God wants really? you to have. Back Total to the, dependency on him. Huh? Total dependency yes. on him. Yes, yes. Back yes. to the question, I can understand why people get confused about this. When I first became a pastor and started preaching the word, I was, a, I was a Jesus guy all the way. I mean, that's all I wanted to talk about was Jesus. And, and so I stuck with the New Testament. Uh, preach mostly from the Gospels, actually. Uh, but, but the more you get into the Scriptures, the more you can relate the Old Testament to the New Testament and the New Testament back to the mm -hmm. Old Testament. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, there, there's a lot in there that we need to take definitely uh, at face value. But, but then, you know, when it comes to dietary laws, you, you mentioned the, uh, going to Red Lobster and eating shellfish. Well, you know, <laughs> Jesus uh, took those laws and, and destroyed them. Um, God even lowered the sheet to, um, to Peter and said, you know, what I've made, you don't call unclean. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So... So we there's have a to, debate around to that too as to, to whether or not that means, you know, for those who believe it's a sin to eat meat, mm -hmm. that when Peter came out and made that statement that he was saying it's okay to eat meat because the Lord said, don't call unclean mm -hmm. what I call mm -hmm. clean. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you have any comments on that or not. But I do. Do you do? Go right ahead. In Colossians, the second chapter, in verse 13, it says, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him, uh, having forgiven all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which is the law. Mm -hmm. And he took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Mm -hmm. He nailed it to the cross. He yes. nailed the law to the cross. All of those things Christ took out of the way. We're, not un we're, we're under a new covenant, which is built upon or based upon better promises. You know, Yes, it points, you know, there are things that they, it, but it all points to Christ and he took it out of the way and we're not living under those laws. We're not trying to live, do all of these things. There's nothing that we can do, whether we don't eat this or don't do that, 
we get so focused on rules and, and, and regulations, we forget what Christ did for us. Mm -hmm. And we forget that it's our faith in Him and our relationship with Him that brings us back to the Father. If there's ever a proof of the deity of Jesus Christ, it's the Old Testament. Oh, amen. It just, it just the, from Genesis chapter 1 all the way through the Old all Testament the way through. All the just way through. points to Jesus. Yeah. That's why you study it, because it points to who Jesus is. Yeah. It points to what he did for us. Right. Amen. You got to remember, a lot of those stories are, are just that. They're stories and in, in how things were at that time. Right. And as, as our brother said, they've taken those, laws, those rules away. Again, and then we follow the New Testament. It all points that way. But we got to remember, we got to learn those to understand the new. Mm -hmm. We have to learn the Old Testament to understand the new. Excellent. I think one of the things that I noticed in reading through the Bible, and I've been trying to do that every year now, is that, that um, the, the point that we need to really focus on is that sin really hurts. Uh, it, it destroyed people back in the, in the Old Testament, and, and then Jesus came along to help us, or to give us grace, but to also tell us to avoid <laughs> sin now mm -hmm. so that we can avoid the consequences of that sinful behavior yeah. and yeah. I'm sure glad we're living in an era Amen. of grace. So. Amen. Yes. Amen. Same here. Here's another question that I thought interesting. How do I discern between God's leading and my own thoughts and feelings? That, that's a very good question. And I get asked that question as a minister. I get asked that question a lot. How, how do you know when God's talking to you? Well, um, <laughs> that's one of the things that, that uh, I like people to ask me. And, and so, so I tell them, if you believe that God's leading you to do something uh, and you don't think that it's quite right, get out your Bible. And if it doesn't line up with the words of Scripture, it's probably not God talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said in John the 10th chapter that my sheep know my voice and another they'll not follow. It's just like the brother said, if what you think you're supposed to be doing doesn't line up 100% with God's word, mm -hmm. you ought not to be doing it. Yeah. You know, God won't, the Holy Spirit will not deviate one bit from God's word. He won't. Okay. And also use not only the scriptures, but also use the church. The wisdom of the elders and the wisdom of the church and go and say, I feel God wants me to do this. Have them going and pray and let that affirmation mm -hmm. come as well. As you just said something we got. We have to make sure we don't forget. First and foremost, we need to go to God and pray and ask him, mm -hmm. is this you or is it me? And he says our prayers will be answered and he will tell us. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the best part is, and we were just talking about uh, the story of Joseph and, or excuse me. Yeah, the story of Joseph. When you pray to God, you pray for his will to be done. Sure. Okay, we're not praying for what I want. <clears throat> You're not praying for what you think you want. We're praying for God's will to be done, to let us know what he wants. Mm -hmm. well, and the other thing is we have to remember is the word of God isn't going to change to fit our lifestyle. Amen. The Holy Spirit, at the office of the Holy Spirit is to change us to line up with the word of God. Absolutely. Very, good. Very well put. Here's another question I want us to delve into. Um, growing up, uh, our family always went to church. We planned our lives around Sunday mornings, and I don't ever remember missing, even during a blizzard. I don't see the same dedication in today's Christians. Are there appropriate reasons for missing church? Basically, I'm asking, is it okay if I don't go every week? <laughs> I think that last sentence. That's so that's really, the key word. That's a key sentence that's right there. That's a bad question that's for pastors. <laughs> Everybody's looking for an easy out. I want you to justify me getting out of church. Well, you know, the fact of it is um, people used to, used to go every week, just like the person mm -hmm. says here. Now they consider you uh, a full-time parishioner if you go 36 Sundays a year, which pretty pathetic really when you think about it. Uh, it shows a, a lack of devotion to God. Um, so, so I say not only on Sunday but on Wednesday night uh, and any, any time the church doors open, if you can be there, be there. I know um, last week we talked about uh, the, the kids who leave home and they mm -hmm. go into rebellion. Um, and 
we didn't bring up this fact, but this is one of the reasons is because we've taught our children that church is an option. Mm -hmm. And so they're involved in sports and they vacation and going camping and all this other stuff. Oh, by the way, we have nothing else to do today, so we're going to go to church. So what does that teach the children? What does that teach the children? And so um, um, I always say you always make time for that which is most important. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't want to come down hard on this person. But part of me just goes, so church is not important. And, and, and I, I know that that poor lady who wrote this is going, oh, no, I, <laughs> I don't mean it that way. But, I, I mean, ever since COVID, I mean, we're dealing with that over and over and over again because all these families are saying, oh, we want to do this vacation now and everything else. And it's like, man, people, man, what are you teaching your kids? What are you teaching them? I make it, make it very quick, I have about a minute left. Okay, I make it, the, the relationship with my church is all the time. Does, do you ever go to God and pray and he says, uh, hey, can you come back on Tuesday? I'm busy today. God never is too busy for us. How can we be too busy for him? Very, very well put. Very well put. Huh? We've got about a minute left. If you want to expand on that just a wee bit more, you can. Well, I just, I just I'm not as nice as, as uh, Pastor Darwin here because... <laughs> I do want the lady to feel bad. You should feel bad if you're making excuses that you're not taking those kids to church. You need to be there on Sunday, not for the pastor. I believe 85% of the people don't come to church to see the pastor. They come for the community and the fellowship with the other Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, just because you're up there talking on Sunday, you know, you're doing what God asks you to do. But them people are there for the community. And what does God say? Steel, sharp, and steel. The more you're with Christians, yeah, sure. the better you're going to be. <laughs> okay. And I, I agree. Very quickly. Very quickly. We need to... Uh, uh, encourage people to come, but you know what? We've created ways for them to watch on YouTube and all kinds of different Just things, and so there's gonna no have, reason to miss church at all. Thank you. We're going to have to leave it at that. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, input. We certainly appreciate all of your wisdom and for your time, gentlemen. Thank you very much. That's it for thank this you. program today. Join us again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris for all of our staff and for these fine ministers. God bless you. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.